Hey guys, so today's practice burn is rope pattern. So whenever I'm learning something new, I like to take these small scraps of wood and I fill it with the pattern that I'm trying to learn and then practice burning. It usually takes a few hours, so by the end of it, I kind of get the gist of how I like to do the burn. I'll show you how I set up the burn and start it, and then we'll time lapse in the end. So with that, let's get started. The first thing I do is sand it to 220 grit. I don't usually work up to 220, I just start with 220. Then we're going to transfer our image onto the piece of wood. So I sketch it out on a little piece of paper, which we will tape to our wood. In the beginning, I suggest being detailed in what you're transferring until you get used to burning and then you can do less once you're comfortable. As you get more comfortable, you can probably get away with tracing out less. And after that, I take a piece of tracing paper or graphite paper and you'll just stick it underneath. You can use anything that's slightly pointed to just trace over. Um, you can use like a needle, pen, anything to trace over, but I have one of my tips that's slightly pointed. I find that if it's too pointed, it gets really dark on the wood, so I have one that's more rounded, and I don't press that hard. I'm just going to outline the rope. I do this mostly just so I know the position of it on my piece of wood, so I have my proportions correct, because I think that was the hardest part for me. Just making sure all the size of everything was proper. And then, especially if it's a big piece, I always just flip to make sure I got the whole uh, picture from here onto here, because sometimes I miss a spot. Now I found that uh, this doesn't erase very well, if at all. So then I just go with the sandpaper again, 220 grit, and then I will sand it until it's as close to invisible as possible, light enough for me to be able to see it there, but to be able to burn over it without you seeing it, because um, unless you're burning really dark, you'll see this through the light parts, and we don't want that. Another thing to know is it's best to sand, when you're doing it by hand, lightly like this, sand with the grain, which is going sideways because I found if you go against it, it starts getting deep into the fibers and then you can notice it smudge. I'm using this shader. I'll put a link in the description of the type it is and where I got it. And then uh, what I always do is I start at a low temperature. I'm using a cold wood detailer and starting at four. And when you're learning the wood that you're burning on, it's easier to start at a low temperature seeing which numbers kind of make it burn darker, and then start moving higher as you know, as you get a feel for the wood, because every piece of wood burns differently. One thing I always do before as well is, as the tip is on now, and as it's heating up, when you remove it from the wood, it will get hot and can leave marks. Not, it can leave harsh marks and not smooth marks, so before, there's a few ways you can prevent this. You can have a scrap piece of wood next to you to move the tool on to cool it down and then work on your piece. But I just blow on the tip before putting it on the piece and every single time I lift it off to move somewhere else, I will blow on the tip before putting it back down to prevent those harsh marks from showing up. Now while I was 
almost burning this. I used the same tip the whole time. For small pictures, I like using the small flat shader, but it was also to show how much you can do with just one tip. Most of the time I only use one tip to burn. It's only when I do like super small details or I want a different look that I'll switch it up, but it's pretty rare. Like I said before, in the beginning I stayed at four on the burner. Uh, this is a little bit less than mid-range and then increase the heat a little just so I could get darker. The entire burn I stayed at 4.5 until the very very end when I wanted super dark areas and I moved it up to 5 but I never went beyond that. I find that usually going around 6 on my burner is when I want to basically make the wood black. If I want to burn dark, I'll just burn slower over it. I never really go higher. I find that when I go in the 6 plus range, you start leaving a very noticeable texture on the wood, which when the light shines on it, can it makes it look really shiny, which I'm not a fan of. I like the matte look, um, but it's especially with sappy wood, it's unavoidable. There's some really cool pictures where you can have it super textured as part of the picture. I plan on experimenting with that in the future, but for now, I try and keep as flat of a texture as possible. This first section of the rope, this small piece, took about 30 minutes. When I first start off with a new pattern it does take a little longer uh, to get into the groove of figuring out the best way to do the pattern uh, but after that especially something that's repeatable like this once you figure out how you want to do it you can speed it up a lot now I am a pretty slow burner I enjoy the process a little bit more than the end result, so I can spend way too long burning an area, or maybe the speed at which I burn is pretty normal. I don't know, since I've never really asked another pyrographer how fast they burn. That is kind of a goal of mine, is to increase dialogue with other burners, just to see what's normal, what they like doing, different techniques. All of the techniques I learned are either from watching someone burn on YouTube or experimenting myself. Most of it has been from experimenting. The entire picture took about five hours. I didn't do it all in one sitting. It definitely was a lot longer than I was expecting. Then again, every time I burn something, I always think it's going to take faster than it actually does. So. Now that I'm actually timing myself, because I usually don't, I'll get a more accurate picture of how fast I can go. I noticed that I started making some of the rope look like scales, and uh, that was not intentional. I might go back, sand it down a little, and fix it up, depending on what I want to do with the pictures that I make during my these practice sessions, because I do plan on practicing a lot of other textures and patterns. That I've been wanting to incorporate in pictures but kind of strayed away from it just because I didn't know how to do them yet. Having these small little scrap pieces that I cut up and just practicing one type of pattern is actually really helpful and I need to do more of it so these videos will definitely help me expand on what I'm capable of doing and kind of show you the process along the way. When I want to highlight a piece, especially when it's a repeating pattern like this, I found it's easier to just burn the whole piece 
and then come back in later with an exacto knife or sandpaper depending but you have more control with an exacto knife and uh, scrape away at the areas where there is the highlights let me know if there's any questions or something specific that you struggle with or that I didn't explain well in the comments and I'll definitely see if I can answer it or get you some resources. I'll stop talking here and let you finish up watching the time-lapse video and hope to see you in the next one.